Hello, this is uh, Joseph James from Planet Earth. No, just um, well, I can tell you what was very hard okay. in college. I uh, was an electrical apprentice studying to be an electrical engineer. I, uh, I had a four year scholarship. They, uh, they 5,000 applied, but they only accepted 50, and I was one of the 50. But it was all trigonometry. Okay. Now, in high school, I passed trigonometry, but it didn't come easy. Some people, it was easy. Now, I used to work at Einstein Hospital. I had a very good job. And I left Einstein Hospital to go into the electrical union, which I wish I never did. <laughs> I wish I was still at Einstein Hospital. But do as a guy. So how many years did you work in hospital? I was there probably like six years. Now, that's a funny story too because they hire from within. So you have to know someone who is already working there to get a job there. So I used to paint houses with a friend of mine, Brian Richardson. And a friend of ours was looking for Brian because uh, his, his father worked at Einstein. was going to get Brian a job at Einstein, but we could not find Brian. So the father talked to me. And that's how I got into Einstein Hospital. But during the time that I was in the electrical union, this man died. Mm -hmm. So when I left the electrical union and tried to get back into Einstein Hospital, I no longer had anyone from inside. So I kicked myself in the butt every time I think of leaving Einstein Hospital. But Trigonometry was very hard. I had to do homework all day long. I wake up and do homework, go on the bus, do homework, on break, do homework, on lunch, do homework, while eating dinner, do homework. It was homework all day long. And I did not enjoy it. So even though I had a four year scholarship, I left in a year and a half. And while I was working there, about six people died. In the hospital? No, in the electrical union. I see. Now my brother was in the same union, and he's sitting there eating lunch on a beam, maybe 65 stories up in the air. And there's a man sitting next to him. And my brother turns to the left, and then turns back and the man's gone. He fell. Mm -hmm. So just that fast, that man was dead. Now, I got an executed a couple times in there. <laughs> I did. I got knocked on my butt a couple times. Now, I, I had a screwdriver in my hand, which turned into a, ma a magnet. And uh, it was okay. You know, I, I also worked at uh, the Bud Company which I made rail car, uh, I mean, uh, I was a rail car mechanic. You in, know, like Amtrak trains, you have Amtrak here. In Las Vegas? Well, it's all in America, yeah, but I used to make trains. Mm. Now, um, it's a high speed train, which was a very good job. And then we got a mayor called Mayor Green. I see different countries, they bid on these jobs and the country that gives the best price gets the job well the bud company was in philadelphia so it's the mayor of philadelphia bidding for the job and he let japan take the work japan outbid mayor green so that made everybody in the bud company lose their jobs mm -hmm which was me also. So I had a great job, which was lost because Mayor Green, he thought, well, I don't want to spend all that money, but 
all these people went out of work. Now, it would have been better to to spend that money, get the jobs in in Philadelphia, build the trains, sell the trains, make the money, the workers pay their taxes. A more, much more money would have came in. But he wasn't a very good mayor. The only he ran for mayor for like 20 years, and he never won. But he would run against someone and lose, run against someone else and lose, run against someone else and lose. But after 20 years, you got to recognize his name. So the one time he was running for mayor, nobody knew the other people. But they knew him because he'd been losing for 20 years. And that's how he became mayor. And that's how I lost my job. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, no happy stories today. Maybe tomorrow. So after after working that union with another another job, what is your another job after working with that company? Ah uh, well, I uh, I've worked for contractors. I mean I've been in construction for many many years working for people. I used to uh, maybe myself and twenty friends. Uh, we used to clean out burnt out buildings that were on fire you know uh, it was a man hired us all we're all from the neighborhood <clears throat> basically we'd be on these uh, cherry pitches which are machines that take you way up into the air and we use acid and clean the cement walls and you got the black soot for a while I had a very dirty job cleaning burned out buildings which was okay because we were all friends um, I even delivered pizza, and I got bitten both knees by a dog when, <laughs> when I was delivering pizza. Remember I told you? Yeah, I knocked at the door with the pizza, and the dog jumps yeah! up on the door, pushes the door open, and bites me in both knees, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I uh, went back to the, you know, work, and... Uh, I was sent home and I had a hard time sleeping because I used to sleep in my stomach and I had dog bites on both knees. And then when I went back to work, I deliver another pizza and I see these plaques on the wall and I said, are you a lawyer? <laughs> he says, yes. I said, I just got bit by a dog. <laughs> so delivering pizza, I got bit by the dog and delivering pizza, I found a lawyer. <laughs> So I had up to two years to sue, but I never did. Um, let's see. I've had uh, mainly construction. Um, I worked at uh, Dumphy Ford, Ford Automobiles. I uh, used to undercoat and rust proof cars. Mm -hmm. Like I had my own lift and everything, and that was my specialty. So I worked with cars and I've worked with trains and uh, well I worked at a hardware store and uh, they had this big huge it was like a it was like a 12 wheel big dump truck and it was stick shift and the lady who owned the business she said you could drive a you know stick shift big truck like this I'm like oh yeah Never drove one before in my life. Mm. <laughs> when I told her, oh yeah, okay. So that's how I learned how to drive a stick shift. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm carrying like 10 tons of sand. And I have to back up this street back into a driveway because they're building a swimming pool. So it is the first time I ever did it. If the people knew that I never drove a truck like that before. They would not have let me back up into their backyard. But, uh, and then I own my own business. And it was much better owning my own business. I, I had other businesses besides the construction. I was in advertising. Um, I just, I just advertised for other, other companies. Now, my, my business, I liked, I, I invented, I, made it start from nothing, had it grow very big. 
had a lot of people work for me. Um, I fired everyone. Um, everyone. Why? <laughs> I mean it. Some people exaggerate. Yeah. Everyone. Yep. Because nobody's dependable. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old, black or white, male or female. Because I had them all work for me. I fired them all. Mm -hmm. But I never said the word fire. I said, have a nice walk home. <laughs> and if they complained, I would say, just be glad we're not 20 miles away. Because you'd still be walking. <laughs> I never took nobody home. They had a walk. But I, I decided I'd just do it by myself. I can depend on myself, we can't depend on others, and up until the point that uh, some 17 year old was driving a car that he only had a license for maybe three weeks, it was his father's car, and it was a 15 year old girl and another 15 year old girl, and they illegally made a left turn and crashed into my van, and my van blew up and was on fire. The engine blew up in my face. I was sitting in fire. I was the worst accident of 2009 in the entire state of New Jersey. Allison Coletti, the one 15-year-old girl, she died. The other 15-year-old girl was in a coma for six months. I was in bed for over a year. And that changed my life. Now, I never went to court against the driver, but I was I was told, you know, don't go. But he got uh, vehicular homicide, so he went to prison for killing that girl. And. I learned a lot of experiences. I've taught a lot of people how to drive. But you know what? You could be the best driver in the world and it does not matter. Because you can have the worst driver in the world next to you. And even though you're the best driver, you're still in an accident. Yeah. So it doesn't matter really so much your skills as the skills of the person next to you. Yeah. And yesterday I picked a lot of a number. <laughs> I said the day before it was going to be 31, played 31, and it came out. But it was a brownout, so there was no electricity, so I didn't get to play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how's that for luck? <laughs> he picked the number and there's no electricity. So you lost your luck. Yeah, right. So I didn't get to play. Yeah. So, what else? Um, this is my beautiful one, my <laughs> sweetheart, Carla. Yeah. Uh, and she was saying for the whole 10 minutes that I've been talking, I hope he doesn't Crazy. do this. But I know she was, but here I am. Hi. Hi. Say hi, Carla. Hello. No, don't say, no, you're supposed to say hi. Hello. Like I said, say, say hi, honey. See. No, I'm like, say, say hi, Oscar. I mean, Edgar, not honey. Remember? <laughs> I, I'm on the phone with Edgar. And I said, say hi, honey. <laughs> and then I said, no, don't say hi, honey. Say hi, Edgar. So she was like, hi, honey. I mean, Edgar. <laughs> so hi. Shouts out to Edgar and James. <laughs> James, don't be driving my car. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing welcome. your life story. Your job story, your work story. Yes. Story story about. And here's my wedding picture. Yeah. I it's done. That's Carla. Oops. <laughs> Did it disappear? Yes, well, thank you very much.